yourself. All right, hallelujah. First of all, I just want to say this here. You know, this whole predestination series is getting really, really, really saucy and juicy right now because tonight the Spirit of God just kind of just dropped this in my heart and, and, and just told me to tell you guys that, guess what? What God has preordained for you, what God has predestined for you, okay, it is happening in your life right now. I'm telling you right now, the glory of God is manifesting through you. It's manifesting in you. It's manifesting in your life, your family. It's manifesting in your career. I'm telling you, the glory of God. In other words, in other words, you and I have been preordained and predestined to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, we dealt with that, that we are the statues of God, that we are literally in the very presence of God. We are literally being changed. Every word we hear, every word we release our faith in, every promise, I mean, every decree of God is already done. So in the eyes of God, we that are born again Christians, we that have given our lives to Jesus Christ, we are complete in Christ. That's what Ephesians says. We're complete in Christ. So now that being said, everything that's going on in the process, we're not looking so much at the things that's going on. We're looking at the end of the process. And the end of the process is us walking as more than conquerors, walking as victors. We are literally walking with the equipment of Almighty God that we're being equipped in every scenario, every situation, every circumstance to overcome to literally rise to the top and do it just like Jesus. Now, I want to go ahead and just turn your attention to, and I'm going to drop down to um, verse, oh, let me see, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Verse 30. Oh, this is one. All right, here we go. We're going down to verse uh, 37. Now, this is, this right here, this right here is the end result plan for God in our lives at the end result of every situation, every, every experience that we have dealing in this life, no matter what it is, God says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So that means now, it doesn't matter what challenges come your way, God says you're more than a conqueror. It doesn't matter how the enemy or who he uses. God says, stand flat-footed and trust me, you're more than conquerors. I'm, when I get done with this here, you're going to say, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Now, you got to understand something. The love of God toward us, the love of God in us is always acting. It's always action-based. It's always in the process of manifesting the very power, the very wisdom, the very heart of God. And so as we now, as we now are submerged in the love of God and understand the love of God and understand how much God loves us, when we face our situations and our circumstances, when we go through the process of achieving the promises of God physically in our possession, going through that process, you know what I mean? The enemy is going to come and he's going to try to discourage. He's going to try. Notice I said try. He's going to try to discourage. He's going to try to bring worry. He's going to try to bring doubt. He's going to try to get us to give up and, 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 and believe that it's too much, that we can't make it through. But the devil is a liar. And I'm telling you right now, you are not a trier. You're a doer. And God says you are not trying to be a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. And you are more than a conqueror through any peril, any situation that comes against you. Why? Because our mind is on Jesus. And you know what the scriptures, I hate to be redundant here, but I got to say it. You know, the scripture says in the book of Isaiah 26, those that keep their mind stayed on me, I will keep them in perfect peace. That means going through the process, whatever it is that you're facing, whatever that, that you're trusting God for, in the midst of that process, God says, if you keep your mind on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. The father says that. The Lord Jesus says that. The Holy Spirit is saying that. Keep your eyes on the promise. Keep your eyes on how Jesus did it. Keep your eyes. And even when, glory to God, you, you see saints that have begun to master the things of God, begin to master, you know what I mean, resisting the devil and making them flee, begin to master submitting to God and humbling themselves to God and watching God exalt them and exalt them in the midst of circumstances and situations. God is a prayer answering God. 
and God is answering your prayers, beloved. I'm telling you right now, all of your prayers have been answered and you got to understand something. God is glorifying you. Yeah, the glory of God is in you. God is glorifying you, not only just because you've gotten saved, but in the midst of every situation that you're dealing with, every victory that you've gotten, every person that you're reaching out to help and render assistance to, God is saying, I am using you. I am glorifying myself in you and through you. I want to I want to just quickly, you know what I mean, remind you again that God says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So that's who you are. You and I, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Hey, all of this praying and praising we doing, all of this studying the Bible, you know, the Lord spoke this here through the apostle Paul. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what we're doing here. We're rightly dividing this word and we're discovering some things. We're discovering the heart of God. We're discovering the will of God for ourselves. And we're accepting that. And we are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, a good praise about right now. Oh, let me tell you something. A good praise about right now will set your faith just absolutely exploding in the midst of your situation, just decreeing what God has said. I mean, praising and worshiping and thanking God for doing it, rebuking that devil in the name of Jesus, and then calling on the power of God, releasing and loosing the power of God in your situation, in your circumstance. And not, not just in warfare, but just to make better what God has already done and what God has begun to lay as a foundation and build as a house in you powerful Christian. That's who you are. You are powerful, strong, growing, evolving Christian. You know, I'm telling you right now, you, you, you just getting better. And you, I'm telling you right now, because God's hand is in your life. Look at this here. Nay, in all these things, verse 37 again, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, through what things? Okay. Look at this here. I'm telling you right now, God goes in there and starts laying down all of this stuff and all of these things that God is saying, I have blessed you to overcome. I'm going to read this for you. And I want you to hear this. I want you to accept it in your heart. I want you to just go ahead and say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm full of God. I'm, I'm born again. I'm growing. My relationship is alive. And, and in the name of Jesus, I'm, I'm speaking like Jesus. I'm, I'm manifesting the same characteristics and the same release of the word and faith and I'm, I'm releasing it on my level, but just like Jesus, I'm imitating Jesus. I'm, hey, saints, I made up my mind. Let's, let's imitate Jesus. I'm going to imitate Jesus. I'm telling you right now, and you, you got to make up your mind. I'm going to find out what Jesus said, and I'm going to release my faith, and I'm going to imitate Jesus to the T. Look at this here. We are more than conquerors. Look at, look at verse 34. I'm getting ahead of myself. I really am. But the Holy Spirit says you need to hear this today. And so I'm going to hear this. I'm, watch this. I'm going to say this so you can hear this. Verse 34. For who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Whoa, hallelujah. Hey, don't be afraid, but walk in faith. Don't worry. You may be in the greatest battle. You may be facing the greatest challenge. You may be standing in, in the gap for someone else praying, and you're looking at their situation, and it's not looking good. Don't let that shake your faith. Jesus is interceding for you. You're interceding for people. God is interceding for them. You, we got a prayer warrior. We got a prayer warrior praying the power of God into our situation, praying that we don't give up in the midst of our situation, praying that we won't go off track in the midst of the process to attaining the promise of God. That's you. That's me. That's us. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Instead, worship and praise God and thank God and tell God, God, I'm trusting you. And I thank you that you got me. I thank you that you're working all things out for my good. I thank you that I will not end up in ruin and defeated. And nothing is going to separate me from my love and your love for me. Look what he goes on to say. He says, God is making intercession for us. This is Jesus. Now he's making intercession for us. Verse 35 says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Hey, if you're facing tribulation today, you know what I mean, higher and, and more intense than ever, 
It could be you're on a brand new level. It could be you begin to grow and apply yourself in the things of God and Satan don't like it. But just because tribulation comes, challenges come, you know what I mean? Pressures come. Don't give in because you're built for it. You're built to handle it. You're built to overcome it. You have been glorified by Almighty God. We have been glorified. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So watch this here. Now, and we're going to look at this word glorified because God says, I'm magnifying you in the midst of that situation. I'm causing you to, to grow and glow and, and, and throw down. Glow, flow, and throw. You, you glow the glory, the anointing is increasing in your life. Uh, flow, you, you are moving at the very instruction of God and you're, and you're seeing things happen and throw, and you throwing that devil off. You throwing down every thought that he's putting in your mind, talking about you not going to make it. God can't come through for you. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm telling you, your life and your future is looking so good because you right there in the center of the hand of God. You, you, are, you are endeavoring and your mind is made up to go to the center of the will and the purpose of God for your life. Satan can't stop that in Jesus name. Hallelujah. So look at this here. Okay, he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Or distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Sword? No. Listen, the apostle Paul went through the, the worst of the worst that could possibly come against you. I didn't say do you in. I didn't say destroy you. I didn't say defeat you because these things won't defeat you when you are operating with an understanding and a knowledge that God loves you so much that God said, just keep your faith released and keep seeking first the kingdom of God and, and my righteousness. This is what God is saying to us. He says, none of these things, none of these things is going to be able to separate you from the love of God, from the power of God, from the very might of God, from the very release and the action base of the word of God in your life, the very miraculous in your life. Your faith, our faith keeps that power flowing. Do you realize that the almighty, all-knowing, everywhere power present, all, they in you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they in us. So you look at your situation and you say, Lord, I need increase. Man, decree that increase in Jesus' name. You decree that increase and know that God is going to put you in that, that situation, that position to increase. Don't worry about what it looked like right now. You just keep your eyes on God. Look at this here. What will stop us? Who's going to condemn us? Nobody. And you, you and God is like this. You and God, you, you, listen, y'all got a deal. Y'all got a contract. And it's ratified and based in the blood of Jesus. That thing is authorized. So study to show yourself approved. Start spending more time in the word. Start spending more time in prayer and praise. Start spending more time, you know what I mean, building yourself up in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. See, that's, that's the response that we give to that devil. And that kind of response is what the Bible calls resisting that devil. Yeah, rebuke him in Jesus' name. And then say, God, I'm doing your will. And God will, God will honor the word of God that you're speaking. God will honor those scriptures that you quote. Yeah, that's why we got to read and study. We got to read the word and ask questions and, and you know what I'm saying? And then put it in the, put it out there. Put it out there and watch God work it. Amen. So watch, he says, he says, tribulation won't, peril won't. So this is the worst of the worst that can happen in anybody's life. This is the worst. And God says the worst that the worst that the devil can throw at you will not conquer you, will not defeat you because you are walking in the love of God. You understand the love of God and you are releasing the love of God in every area of your life, driving the devil nuts. He running them all kinds of directions. Just running out your situation, running out your life, just running out your family, running out. I don't care. Look, listen, he may, he may be dragging his feet in some areas. He may be trying to, you know what I mean? Make you think that, that, that he ain't even listening to you. Oh yes, he is. He's listening to you because when you speak to your situation, when you speak to your future in Jesus' name, oh, heck, all of heaven listen. The Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they hear that. Your angels hear that. And you start talking, Lord, I thank you for working it out. And I thank you for working it out for my good. 
And Lord, I thank you for working out for my good because you know I love you and you love me. See, that's the scripture now. This is the word of God. This is Bible right here. See, all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called. Hey, the love of God that we have for God and the love that God has for us, this thing is all about the love of God right now. And we're developing in that, cultivating that love. And the Bible says, who's going to stop us? Who's going to separate us from the love of God? Nothing. So when he said, wait, 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 what do you mean the love of God? For God so loved the world. You know that scripture. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm telling you right now, eternal life is full of salvation. It's full of the blessing. It's full of everything, the prosperity. That's why your future is looking real good right now. I'm telling you right now, in God, in Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's where you got to stay. That's the frame of mind you got to stay in. You cannot allow the circumstances to dictate the, 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 the flow of your thinking, especially if that flow is negative. You can't, you can't say and believe what you're seeing if what you're seeing in the natural is nothing but the attack of the enemy, nothing but trials, tests, tribulation, peril, and famine, all of that, persecution. If that's what you're currently experiencing, it is simply because you're getting better and you have now you have, you have pushed a button on that devil that's got him all concerned. So he's hitting you with everything he can. But God says, listen, don't worry about it because my glory is in you. And in the midst of these situations, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of whatever it is, and I pray you already overcame all of the attacks of the enemy and that you are sitting there on, on the mountaintop enjoying the conquest of, of your, your trusting God and you're, you're seeing the hand of God work in your situation. Listen, if you're sitting in that, you sitting pretty, enjoy that. And then share with others how to get there and let them know that you love God and that God loves you and you got faith and your faith is working and it triggers the power of God to release in your life. You've humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God. He's exalting you right now. It's your time for exaltation more than conqueror. It's your time to be head. It's your time to be the, 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 the spokesperson for God. It's your time to run tribulation off. It's your time to run famine off, to run peril off. Everything that the enemy says, it's your time. It's our time. Glory to God. And I'm telling you right now, oh, sweet Jesus. Our faith is growing exceedingly. Our faith is getting stronger and stronger. And watch this here. Uh, let me go back here. He says, he says, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. I count it, killed all the day. Listen, you're under attack. Everybody, every Christian, if you growing in God, Satan is trying to challenge you. He's trying to bring, you know what I mean, all of this drama against you to try to stop you from growing. To kind of try to stop you from expanding your territory and discovering your purpose. And I'm telling you right now, he cannot defeat you. He cannot defeat us. If we stay focused on these facts, Jesus is already praying and making intercession for us. You know Jesus knows how to get prayers through. You know, listen, when Jesus prayed, if Jesus is standing in the gap for you and I, we ain't got nothing to worry about. And we're going to go through all of this here craziness, this, this, you know what I mean? Trial, tribulation, persecution, all of that. The nakedness, distress. We going through all of that and, and it's not going to touch us in Jesus' name. But you know what? If you actively, the devil's trying to bring these things to your reality, you're going to have to stand and you're going to have to resist this stuff. Resist anything that looks like it's trying to bring tribulation. It resist, if it even looks like it's remotely trying to bring distress, you, you got to speak to it and say, oh no, I'm not having that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's taking a stand for God. That's, that's, that's going into warfare mode for God. Yeah, and you using God's name, you using God's word, and the spirit of God going to respond to that. Your angels going to respond to that. You protected in Jesus' name. You prosperous in Jesus' name. You are delivered from anything the enemy tries to bring at you in Jesus' name. And you know you preserve to go to heaven when you die in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh, we believe in all of that, right? So look at this here. So look at this here. Nay, as it is written, for thy sake, 
we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Hey, hey, the minute you stand for God, the minute you stand for Jesus, Satan coming at you. But God says, don't let that bother you because if you stand for me, okay, you stand for me, okay, watch this there. You're going to come to the place where you're going to say, Verse 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But look at this here. Look at this here. Uh, oh, God. Okay. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me tell you something. The enemy is doing his best to turn us into God haters, God doubters. You know what I mean? He's trying to turn us into those that are angry with God. And he can't do that. He's he going to try, but he's not going to be successful. Remember, Jesus is interceding for you, praying that you manifest that overcoming mentality, that overcoming spirituality, that overcoming lifestyle, that just like Jesus lifestyle. That's what's happening right now. That's what's happening. You just got to believe that. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting better. You just got to say, I'm an overcomer in Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'm a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. You wait till we break these words down. It's going to be amazing. But what I, what the Holy Spirit really wants to impress upon you is that a lot of the things, the persecutions, the tribulations, all of those things that, that the enemy attacks with and whoever he uses is because of Jesus. It's because of the God relationship, that God connection that you have, that Satan is angry that you have it and he don't. Oh yeah. So that's why we ought to rejoice. That's why we can rejoice because we have that connection with God and we're growing that connection with God. And not only are we growing that connection with God, but we see it and we're getting more confident. We're getting more persuaded. We, we are literally, you know what I mean? We, 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 our convictions for God is growing, you know what I mean? At such an alarming rate to Satan that, that, that he's bringing all of these things at us. But every time he throws this in our lives, we smack it out the park. Like, 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 you know, like we Hank Aaron, you know what I'm saying? We just killing the ball. We killing all of the attacks of the enemy, killing them resisting him and he's fleeing but and oh sweet jesus thank you lord in that process of resisting the devil and trusting god it may not be the most comforting emotional feeling you know what i mean but that's what the enemy is attacking he's, he's coming against your emotions he's coming against your feelings trying to make you feel you know what i mean all of these different negative emotions while you're standing and resisting the enemy and you just got to cast down every thought he's putting in your mind. You got to you got to cast down every thought that he's putting in your mind about the people that you're praying for, that you're interceding for and praying God's victory and blessing in their life. They may be looking like and acting like they're going the wrong direction. You can't let that bother you. You can't let that get you discouraged. You can't let that cause you to not pray. If they start the people that you're praying for now, the people that you're standing in the gap for, the people that you're witnessing to, you know, especially if you're witnessing the people that you come in contact on a daily or a regular basis. Don't worry about when you see the enemy literally attacking them and, and, and trying to get them out of the things of God and get them worse in their relationship, making them, you know what I mean, do and say and, and act crazy. You can't let that bother you. You stay on them with the love of God. You stay on them with the word when God tells you to drop a seed and you will help them to recover. But at the same token, you still getting stronger and wiser and moving forward, staying busy for God. And then in your own personal situation, God is like, oh, really? Watch me work. So we trust in God and we, we walking in that love. And God says, look, I'm glorifying you in the midst of your situation. Yeah because you love me and because you know that I am the greater one on the inside of you. And because we're actively operating in the formula of God. Now, God says, verse 37, and all of that stuff, all of that you're going through, you know what I mean? These attacks, these challenges, it's because you living for me, you seeking me, and because you praying for other people. Yeah, you blessing other people that God is sending in your life. But God says in all of the attack and all of the retaliation from that devil against your situation, God says, stand firm, stand faithful, stand 
full of faith and stand praising and worshiping and stand expecting me to come through because because after that devil shoot his shot and he hit that spiritual Kevlar that you wear and he hit that spiritual hedge that you got around about you. Oh, don't make me go. Don't make me go to Psalms 91 on you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. That's your position. That's where you're called to walk. You are walking right now. I don't care what's going on. You are under the shadow of the almighty. Oh, glory to God. So whatever that enemy throws against you, 10,000 on the left, 20,000 on the right, it don't matter. It will not come nigh you. That's the promise of God. But you and I, we're in agreement. Stay in agreement with that. Watch that stuff fall at your left, fall at your right. That's, that's Psalms 91. God hasn't released me to teach on that yet. But when he does, oh boy, we are going to have an amazing shouting one of them old fashioned camp meeting, old fashioned revival shout meetings. We gonna be hollering hallelujah and thank you Jesus for answering prayer, giving us breakthrough, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God, glory to your name, Holy Spirit. And watch this here. And God says, when I get done with you, that devil gonna be like, oh my God, they standing just like Jesus. They resistant tribulation like Jesus. They resistant peril. They are resistant famine, just like Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this is what God is doing. This is what God's developmental program in you is having. The right and the expressiveness because you are in faith, because you trust God, you're allowing that word to grow. That incorruptible seed of the word of God is growing on the inside of you. And it is literally changing your thinking. It's changing your expectations, it's changing your outlook. And it is now glory to God. When I say changing for you that are fired up and ready to go, you're getting stronger, man. Your faith is growing. You're getting more confident. You're more persuaded. The devil, all of these, all of these attacks that he can throw at you don't even budge you anymore. You're like, boy, that's all you got? You must be desperate to hit me with all of this at one time. And God says, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand on the word of God. Stand in prayer and praise. Stand studying the word of God. Keep, don't run from God. Run to God. Don't, don't slack up. You need to you stay in there. Get that word in you. Feed your spirit, right? And then God says, man, all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Wait a minute. See, you know, let me tell you how dumb the devil is. The devil, oh stupid devil, think that you trying to do this in your own strength. That we trying to do this in our own strength. But he don't understand that we understand grace. He don't understand that we understand better goodness and mercy. Wow. He don't understand that we understand more the glory of God that's in us. Our position given to us by Jesus Christ. And we're starting to walk in that position. Nay, and all these things, verse 37, he says, he says, all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look at this here, look at this here. For I am persuaded that neither death, watch how Paul breaks this thing down, nor life, nor angels, nor principality. It don't matter what's going on in the spirit realm. Nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, let me back up. Let me back up real quick because watch this here. You know, when we start talking about what God is doing in us, you know what I mean? And how God is like, just literally made Jesus the down payment for all of the goodness of God in our lives, that, that down payment was made and that down payment raised from the grave, man, that down payment rose from the grave. Let me get my addiction right, all right? And 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 the price has been paid for you to walk in this glory. Now watch what this here, I, I'm, I'm all over the place right now, but I'm about to back up because the foundation is laid for us to deal with this, this predestination and this cause and all this here stuff. Let me say, moreover, I'm in verse 30 now, work with me, all right? I'm just flowing with the Holy Spirit right now, but work with me. Look at this here. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. That's you and I. We've been predestinated by God. We've been invited into the things of God. 
we have accepted God's invitation. We have received the love of God because we understand that Jesus died because God loved us. So we're now accepting of that love. And now we respond to that love with love and obedience and just a promise, God, we're going to do more. We're going to manifest the image of Jesus. But God, we need, you, we need you to teach us how to do this. So that means we got to see Jesus clearer. We got to look at Jesus' life and examine Jesus' life because that was the, Jesus' life is the greatest weapon, at least from heaven. For, for mankind, for us, for our redemption. And so now we look at Jesus and we say, okay, God, all right, you're conforming us to the image of Jesus. So Jesus was more than a conqueror. That's why you and I, right here, right now, we are more than conquerors through Jesus. But you got to stay in the word. You got to stay in that frame of thinking. You got to stay in that eternal frame of thinking, that eternal mindset, no matter what the enemy is throwing at you, he's trying to get you out of that eternal mindset, that faith mindset, that, that more than conqueror mindset, that um, the image of Jesus concept. Because that's what you are. That's what we are. Being conformed every day. God is like conforming us to the image of Jesus, fashioning us, kind of like the potter with the clay. You know what I mean? The potter sitting there and got us as the clay, got us as the subject of, of, of their workmanship. And you and I are being worked by God in the midst of every situation to handle it like Jesus, to talk it like Jesus did to all of the trials and tribulations. You know, all this trials, tribulations, all this stuff, Satan attacked Jesus with and got it. He got his hiney whooped. Jesus put the word on him. And so we're learning now, we got to put the word on that devil, but in Jesus name, right? And we got we to come at it with full faith and expectation that God's going to honor that word. So look at this here. He says, those he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And the Spirit of God was like, deal with this a little bit before we go and jump all the way in and start back up there where, you know what I mean, we're talking about foreknowledge and imagery and all of that stuff. So look at this here, glorified. We dealt with this a little bit last time. Doxadzo, doxadzo, that's the Greek word, doxadzo. But this is what it means. And this is what God is doing to you. This is what God is doing to me. This is what God is doing to Christians. I'm telling you, that's why we're the most important people on this planet, because we're the only ones that know how to get people into a relationship with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're the only ones walking around the planet that know that and believe that and, and are out there witnessing and evangelizing to, to try to get people connected to God so that they can stop Satan's tribulations and perils and nakedness and famine in their lives. Yeah, Satan think that he's, he's just going to have a unrestrained and unchallenged heyday in people's lives. We done kicked them out of our situation and we keeping them out. Now we got to help others kick him out of their situation. All right, look at this here. Let's look at this word glory. Okay, doxazo. To render or esteem glorious. Okay, all right. Right here, right now, you and I, Christian, we have been rendered and esteemed, hold on, glorious. That's you. That's me. You and I, we got to now accept what God has said about us, accept what God has done for us, accept what God is doing in us. You know what God is doing in you, beloved? You know what he's doing in you? He, he's making you to manifest the glory. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they are helping us and furnishing, furnishing us with the attributes and the characterizations and the very, the very essence of Jesus so that we be glorious for the glory of God. And that's some powerful stuff. So in your situation, in everything that you are pursuing and pressing in the, in the things of God, 
toward the mark of God, as Philippians says. Everything that you and I are doing, we doing this because we've been glorified and justified. You've been justified, man. You, you and I, we've been made righteous. Oh, hallelujah. We glorified. That word glorified not only means to render or esteem glorious, but it means to be full of glory, to have glory, to have honor. I'm telling you, in the midst of your situation, trusting God, God says, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to set you apart. I'm going to establish you. you. You know what I mean? I'm going to, that word glorious or glorified, doxazo, also means to magnify. Yeah, God says, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to magnify you. I'm going to render you glorious. That is what's happening to us right now. In the midst of our situation, God is rendering us glorious. And I'm telling you right now, we are more glorious when we stand and withstand all of the craziness, all of that peril and, and nakedness and famine and all of that stuff, persecutions, all of that that the devil's releasing at us, attacking us with, because that's all it is. It's an attack. It's not there forever. It's not going to stay. But God, God says what is going to stay forever is our love, the connection that we have. Oh, glory to God. Do you know you got a love connection with God? You and God's connection is based in love, is based in God's love for us and our response and our love for God. I'm talking right now, God is like, oh, when I get done with you, you're you going to love me so much. You're going to love me more than anything on the planet. You're going to love me. You're going to love me. And you're going to love me with, with, with like a plant, like a plant when the seed and the soil is good and you give it the sunlight and you water it and it just starts growing up. Yeah, that's you. You growing up to God, you you expanding to God will. And that love, that love is that's the thing. Yeah, I'm falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with the Father God, falling in love with the Holy Spirit. That's the key to falling in love with the things of God, falling in love with the people of God, falling in love with the creation of God. That's the proper way to approach everything. Hey. You have an intercessor. You have an intercessor. You know, we're talking about shepherd. We have shepherds, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But we also have intercessors. Jesus is praying for us. The Holy Spirit is praying for us. They pray in the will of the Father in our lives. If you read this word, whatever God promises, this is what Jesus and the Holy Spirit is working together in, in unison to bring to our reality to bring to your reality. And the father's like, you know, I'm in agreement with it. I, you know what I mean? I, this, is, this is my heart's desire manifesting in humanity. We done recouped and recovered them. And now we're teaching them how to be, as the scripture says, more than a conqueror. You're not just a conqueror, you more than a conqueror. You, you are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now watch this here, watch this here. Let, let's, 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 let's look at this word glorify real quick. Okay, to praise, to magnify, to celebrate. Now, now when we say praise, we're not talking about praising like, like, like we praise God and worship God as God. But God has said, because of your activities, you, 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 are, you are about to get acknowledged. You are about to be celebrated not praised and acknowledged and celebrated as God, but praised and celebrated as a child of God that's fulfilling their purpose. God says, I'm going to extol you. I'm going to magnify you. I'm going to celebrate you. That's the glory that's in you. That's, that's, that's what's in you. And that's what God is doing in you as you conquer every attack of the enemy, as you rise up in the midst of your greatest persecution, your greatest affliction, your greatest, you know what I mean? Whatever you face and whatever the devil's throwing at you, you stand strong and, 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 and trust God and watch God work. Watch God maneuver. Watch God answer your prayers. Look at this here, okay? To honor, to do honor to, to hold in honor. This is what God is doing in you. Watch this here. I don't care. Listen, 
Folk may count you out. They may say it'll never happen. God says, my glory, I glorified you. I've, I've honored you. I'm doing honor to you. Wait till we break these words down. It's going to get real play. I, I'm going to hold you in honor. In other words, honor is going to be the thing that's like that's like a brace around about you. That's the that's the that's that's what God did when He glorified you. You you've been glorified. We've been glorified. We're in the process of glorification. All right, watch this here. Definition number four: to make glorious and adorn with luster, to clothe with splendor. I'm telling right now, you gonna come out looking like Jesus. You are gonna come out. Sound like Jesus, whatever you're dealing with, you're going to stand up on that mountaintop in glory and splendor like Jesus. You are going to conquer and, and live out and manifest what it means to be more than a conqueror, just like Jesus. When Jesus rose up out that grave, man, the glory of God, can you imagine that? The glory of God all over Jesus. He, 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 was, he had such a glow on him. Shucks, man. And you got and are building. I got, I have, and am building. We have and are building the intensity of that glory from God, that honor from God each and every day. We are in the process of building it, and we're getting more splendorous every day. Woo! Glory to God. Look at this here. Look at this here. To close with splendor to impart glory to something and render it excellent. As you, God has imparted the glory and rendered you excellent. And everything that we're doing in life is catching up to what God has already done. You and I, the first step to really moving forward is to begin to agree with God and say, I have been glorified. You have been glorified. We better than anything that the devil is throwing at us. We're better than any temptation he's bringing at us. We're better than any persecution, any tribulation, any affliction he's throwing at us. I might have to break all of these words down because we got to know, we got to be able to recognize the attack of the enemy so that we can now make the enemy recognize the glorification that God has done in our lives. God has done glorification in you and that glorification has to come out. And it is. Look at this here. Look at this here. <laughs> This is going to be good. Tell my God. Okay. Four again. Four again. To impart glory to something and render it excellent. Hey there, excellent. That's right. I'm telling you right now, every move you make, every step you take is a step of excellence toward perfect excellence. And you know who Jesus is? Jesus Christ is perfect excellence in manifestation. And we are being conformed to that image. That's why, that's why you sounding better, looking better, talking better, thinking better. You, your warfare and your resistance to the enemy is better. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. If, the, if there was ever a moment for you to start praising and glorifying God, now is that time. If there was ever time for us to thank God for what God has done and then remind you, I, re, let me remind you, he's interceding. That everything that they have done, Jesus is interceding that everything that the Father and the Holy Ghost and he has done for us, that, 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 that we will allow the light of that revelation to change our thinking, to change what we expect, to change how we act and how we behave. Look at this here. That word, that word glorify, okay, also means to make renowned and render illustrious. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you right now, listen, folk gonna remember you as you come in there, speaking the word, praying for folks, you know what I mean? Lifting up your hands, praising uh, God for blessing them, releasing your faith, just, just being that source of encouragement, yeah. You doing all of those things, God says, I, I am going to make you renowned and I'm going to make you illustrious. Now, you're already renowned in the eyes of God. You're already illustrious. 
in the eyes of God. God says, I'm going to start causing people to see the growth and the development and the love that you have for me and, and what, you've, what you've allowed my love and influence to do in you. This is what God is saying. God is saying, listen, listen, when, 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 when our love becomes the topic of discussion. What do you mean our love? When you start letting folks know how much you love God, the changes that you are making is because you love God. The resistance of the enemy is because you love God. That everything that you do, that everything, oh Lord Jesus, I just looked out of the time. My time is almost gone. Let me, let me wrap up with this statement. That everything that you are doing, every area that you're growing in, it is because of the love of God. God's love for us and our love for them. All things work together for the good to them that love God, that are called according to their purpose. All right, so, so watch this here. Watch this here. This word glorified means, and this is really the last definition. We're going to break these words down as we go on. To cause the dignity and worth of some person or a thing to become manifest and acknowledged. Okay. All right. A lot of definition there. Let me break it down. In one little simple statement. God says, I've already glorified you. I've already caused my dignity and my worth to become manifest and acknowledged. Now, every time God does something in our lives, Every time God answers a prayer, every time God fulfills his word, I'm talking about the power, of, I'm talking about the father right now. Every time the father fulfills his word, God is manifested. The, the truth and the integrity of his heart. I'm still talking about the father God. See, the father sent Jesus. The Father sent the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, they're working together as a team. You know what I mean? But what happens is, you know, the Father's doing his role. The Lord Jesus did his role. Holy Spirit's doing his role. You know what I mean? They all God. They all deity. They all divinity. They all are the rulers, the judges, the magistrates of the universe. They are all Elohim. They're all Yahweh Elohim. Each of them working together as one. They're one. They're unified one. So now watch this here. Hold on. What God is saying is God says, I'm going to manifest the answer to my promise. And I need you to acknowledge it. That's pretty simple, actually. How do we acknowledge that God answered prayer? Tell folks God answered prayer. We start praising and worshiping and, and, and being grateful and loving God more and more because God is answering prayers. Every prayer that gets answered, every good thing that happens in your life, happens in our lives, we sitting there saying, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Whew. All right. My time is all gone. Listen, I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes. Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International. I pray that these messages are, are just blessing your spirit, encouraging you, educating you, stirring you to want to love God even more, to want to understand the love of God even more. I, I, you know, God's love to us, really, God proved it. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. You want to experience that love in a more deeper, in a more personal way? God says, my invitation to you is a simple invitation. I want you to get saved. I want you to trust in my plan. This is God talking to you. God is saying, telling me to tell you, God wants you to simply trust in his plan. I'm talking about the father right now. And what was the plan of the father? The father sent Jesus. And the father and the Holy Spirit working through Jesus Christ 
creates a way for us to be saved, to be glorified, and to have our life secure for the rest of eternity. We're in the earth realm right now. We're in this realm called time. But God says, I will bless you and love you and you will love me and you will, you will learn the ways that Jesus defeated every attack of the enemy in your life. But in order for you to be official with that, you've got to give your life to Jesus. I want to pray this simple prayer with you right now. And I pray that, that, that you will just repeat these words after me and mean it in your heart and then God will take over from there. Amen. So repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, I come before your throne. I know I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. But today, I repent. Jesus, I believe by choice, based on the word of God that I've heard, that you died for my sins. God punished you instead of punishing me. And you paid the price for my sins. Yeah, repeat this, repeat this. And you went to hell and suffered in the fire and brimstone, paying the price. And you paid the price and rose from the grave. And today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I trust you now, Jesus to save my soul. And according to the Bible, which cannot lie, I confess you as my God, my Lord and my savior. And I believe in my heart, God raised you Jesus from the dead on that third day. And according to Romans chapter 10, I believe right now you have heard my prayer and I am saved. These things I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, glory to God. You prayed that prayer. You meant it in your heart. You are saved. It is just that simple. We just take God at his word. That's faith. We just say, God, if this, is, if this is your formula, if this is what I need to do, confess Jesus as my Lord, can just confess Jesus as my God and believe in my heart, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. Okay. And you did that. Congratulations. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, listen, visit the description box. There's some information on how you can contact our ministry. And if you will do so, we will get information in your hands to make sure that you grow your relationship with Almighty God. And until next time, again, I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God strengthen you as his conqueror. Talking about the Father God right now. Be more than a conqueror for the glory of God in Jesus' name. God bless you. Shalom.